So, hello and welcome to this uh, the first lecture in this lecture series on uh, digital forensics. And the lecturer here is me, Joachim Chevrestad. Uh, I'm a lecturer in informatics at the University of Skövde, which is a small town located pretty much in between Gothenburg and Stockholm. Uh, I am doing this lecture series uh, part as part of a course that I'm holding in uh, digital forensics here at the University of uh, Skövde. Um, in my personal experience, I've had a couple of years working with working as a forensic expert with the, the Swedish police. Uh, I've been the lead examiner on over 100 cases ranging from theft to battery to assault to, to murders and child exploitation cases, which is also a big part of uh, digital forensics, uh, unfortunately. Uh, this lecture series will go through uh, the fundamentals of what digital forensics actually is at uh, a more abstract level, uh, discussing methods for digital forensics, uh, what digital forensics can do, and what you have to think about when you work as a forensic expert to do forensically sound uh, investigations. And uh, one thing that will become apparent during the lecture series is that this series is very much geared towards uh, digital forensics in law enforcement and what's interesting is that digital forensics is being used uh, more and more in corporate uh, environments and different organizations like governments and such but the thing is that the techniques that you learn and the methods that you learn when you look at digital forensics from a law enforcement perspective are uh, applicable in those other environments as well. You, you may even want to say that the rules and regulations and methods are stricter within law enforcement so that you, so you can take everything that you learn here and maybe even loosen it up a little bit and apply it in, uh, in a corporate environment. So to start off this first lecture we'll discuss a little bit about what digital forensics is and uh, to start to start at, I want to, show, to just present what I think that a computer forensic expert is and what such a person is doing. Uh, and basically a person doing forensic uh, examinations is a forensic expert and that is a person who is examining digital media in order to establish what has happened. And in this discussion what has happened to a computer uh, or some other digital device such as a cell phone phone or a USB device or whatever it may be. Uh, the aim here is mainly to look at files and artifacts on a computer or, or on a cell phone and to be able to recreate what has been happening with that cell phone. What websites has it visited? What applications has it been, have it been used? What uh, chat applications has been used on this device and what's been said? Um, and uh, what's interesting is that forensic is also extended to analyze what is currently happening. Uh, one part of forensics is actually analyzing network traffic to see what's happening right now. And as you will see later, there is uh, the live forensic examination where you actually analyze a computer that is currently running to see what, it's, what it is currently up to, such as what network connections does it have, what applications are currently open, who is the computer using user currently chatting with? Um, there is also one part where you may uh, intercept traffic between two persons. Let's say that it's a child exploitation case and the perpetrator is trying to uh, chat uh, with a child to make him or her do something. Uh, then it's not totally uncommon that you try to analyze that traffic when it's happening in an attempt to be able to locate the perpetrator and bring him to justice, of course. Uh, as I said, computer forensics is used in law enforcement as well as in corporate environments and different uh, nonprofit organizations, of course, and uh, well, in any type of environment where there is a computer system. So, looking more into what digital forensics is, I would like to say that the foundation of digital forensics is that it is the practice of collecting, analyzing, and reporting on digital data and digital data is then of course data that is stored on a digital device such as a computer and combined uh, collecting analyzing and reporting on digital data that becomes the process of a forensic examination and it's also implicit that there is someone who is requesting the examination in law enforcement it's the investigation leader or a uh, prosecutor in a company it might be your supervisor or whatever um, and 
it's also implicit that that someone must have a reason for wanting the examination. So if someone comes to you as a forensic expert, he will say that I want these devices to be examined for the reason of establishing uh, whether or not it's been part of a narcotics, na narcotics uh, drug scam, for example. And then uh, it's the role of you as a forensic expert to look at the evidence, the data within that computer and uh, try to determine whether or not it's been part of a, a drug scam. Uh, there is also someone who is examined or at least someone whose devices are examined and that's as we will uh, later see also an important part of digital forensics uh, both for the purpose of trying to establish who's b been behind the, the keyboard or behind the screen when something has happened because I know I mean you can say that well this computer has be definitely been involved in a drug scam but that doesn't necessarily mean that the computer owner has been involved in a drug scam. So it's very interesting to use digital forensics to see if you can determine, I mean, well, at this time, uh, the 5th of May, at uh, some time, this computer sold drugs, but can we also establish or at least make a pretty good guess at as to who was behind the screen at that point in time, because you can't uh, prosecu uh, prosecute computers, at least not in Sweden. Okay, so moving on, uh, the next slide I want to show you is actually a picture that sort of tries to show the processes, inputs and outputs of a forensic uh, examination, just like, a, like we just discussed. And to begin with, uh, the first process is the process of collecting data, and this is basically a two-step process where someone collects the physical devices, but it's also about collecting the information from the devices, and this is something that has to be done in a forensically sound uh, way and all everything, and that's something that we will discuss later. Uh, as an input to the collection stage, there is a target person uh, or target digital evidence. Someone tells you, or for some reason, some person or some digital devices are of interest to you, and it's from the this person or from this digital device that you're going to collect the digital information. And moving on from collection, there is the second step, which is analyzing. And as input to this step, there is some question or some reason for the examination. Uh, as we said, one reason can be to uh, establish whether or not the computer has been part of a drug scam. Another reason can be to see in a corporate environment to see if someone um, maybe shared some files that uh, some secret files with um, with another company, uh, some insider job or or whatnot, at least there is a question or reason for the examination. And that's what you bring into the anal an analysis process and then you gear your an analysis towards answering questions relating to, to this objectives, if you will, with the examination. Because you have to understand that with a computer, it's not uncommon now for a computer to contain one or more terabytes of data and it's not at all, all uncommon for uh, an investigation to cover several computers. I mean, I think that the most pieces of evidence that I've had in, in one investigation was about 100 evidence pieces of evidence, and I've worked cases with, well, at least 30 terabytes of data in them, and analyzing every bit on every hard drive becomes impossible. So for that reason, you have to have a question or some objective or some reason for the examination and go from there. Uh, for instance, if you're working in a narc narcotics case, uh, you will, when you get some experience, know what piece of evidence that's usually interesting there. And when you're working a, a child exploitation case, you will know what's interesting there. And well, that's what you have to bring into the analysis process so that you can work uh, swiftly and efficiently and reach good results. So when you found your uh, artifacts during the analysis process, there is uh, the final step, which is the reporting step, and uh, the what you're going to do in the report step is basically to account for what you've done, what evidence you uncovered, and draw conclusions uh, in relation to the questions that you were asked. And that's also the purpose, or the output of the report is answered to the questions, ideally. Um, all of those steps will be discussed in more detail during this lecture series, uh, but for now let's just have a short look on what digital forensics can do. And as we've been saying before, digital forensics is about uncovering what has been done using a digital device. And it's quite obvious that this includes uncovering what is stored on the actual device. I mean, uh, 
uh, pictures can be evidence, files can be evidence, uh, folders can be evidence, log files can definitely be evidence and so on. But digital forensics can also track uh, files or information that is less obvious such as uh, internet history including browsing and chat history. Uh, digital forensics can examine what's called metadata on files uh, to see for example who authored a document or where a picture was taken which is really cool and there is also cases where you can actually determine where a device has been at a certain time and place I've actually heard I didn't work in myself but I've heard about a case in uh, in my jurisdiction where I used to work where someone where the police was able to locate a device or a cell phone to uh, to a certain geographical area just because the device had been connected to a wireless router at that place and that led to uh, the person being prosecuted for murder and sentenced to i think life or 18 years or something in prison so there is cases where you can determine where the device has been even if the device itself doesn't contain any information that is relevant for the cr crime just the positioning can be very important uh, basically what you should know is that everything that you do with a digital device will leave prints and a skilled forensic expert can uncover them so that that was it for this first lecture series thank you for your attention if you have any questions you can just post them here in the comments field uh, or if you're taking a course by me you can of course send me an email or ask me do, uh, during one of the supervised session but i will actually make an attempt to answer the questions that are posted here as comments or if there are too many maybe i will try to do a q a lecture or something uh, so once again thank you for for your attention and see you again in the next video